Hey guys, David Small here with Team Small Robots, and I'm very excited today to talk to you about my brand new CO2 powered beetle weight flipper, Kelpie. So just like all my other robots, Kelpie's name takes its inspiration from Celtic and medieval origins. In Celtic mythology, a Kelpie is a type of supernatural water horse. They haunt lakes and rivers, taking the form of a beautiful horse to lure its victims into riding them. But then once on their back, the Kelpie will shapeshift into its true form and drown the rider so that they can devour them. So what does that have to do with my robot? Eh, not much, uh, but it sure is cool. So before we take off the lid and look at what makes the robot work, I'd like to briefly talk about what inspired this robot and what my goals were when building it. Now, if you're familiar with my other combat robots, specifically the Highlander, you'll notice that this robot basically looks like the Highlander's big brother. And that's because both robots share the same goal. That goal is to make a flipper as powerful as possible while overcoming the challenges and restrictions of an insect level weight class. Now, CO2 has been done before in Beetles. That's uh, nothing new here. Um, robots like Launchpad or Buzzkill have been doing that for years, CO2 powered flippers, but what they do is they regulate the pressure from the 800 psi the cartridge supplies down to about 250 or so, which is something much more manageable. And that leads me to the biggest inspiration for this robot, Flange. So Flange is a UK beetle weight, which means it weighs 1.5 kilograms. If you convert that to freedom units, it's something like 3.3 or 3.31 pounds but it is a full pressure, unregulated CO2 flipper. So one of the goals, or challenges rather, of building Kelpie was can we take a full pressure system, you know, something kind of like the one in Flange, and, you know, make something smaller and put it into a lighter robot, something that weighs 0.3-ish pounds less. And, I mean, you saw the montage before this, so you know the answer is yes, and it's because of that accomplishment that I do say that now Kelpie is the world's smallest full-pressure CO2 flipper. So what makes Kelpie Kelpie? Well, the most important component of the robot would be its ram. The ram is what shoots the arm up into the air so that it can launch its opponents. You'll notice it's very similar to my featherweight Morag's ram, just smaller, of course. It's basically a scaled down version with the important details like wall thickness and stuff like that kept intact so that it doesn't explode when handling the massive 800 PSI pressures. It's actually rated to handle 1200 PSI as it's hydro tested to 150% of its working pressure. So now with the background of the robot a little more established, let's jump into the design. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. This is Kelpie's CAD file. Um, if we hide the top plates we can get a look at the guts inside of here um, so we can start with the pneumatics I'll hide the flipper here so you can get a better look um, so here's the ram it mounts into the base plate with a handful of screws and then the solenoid also helps keep it in place um, then down the line here we have our co2 cartridge this is 20 grams which is uh, you know bigger than your typical 12 or 16 gram, but it's still not enough. I only got maybe four or five flips out of it, and that last flip would be a pretty sad flip. It would barely lift the other robot. So in the future, I definitely want uh, a way to get more gas. So the cartridge would be inserted before every fight by taking off just the top plate on this side and then shoving it in here, and then I had a pair of pliers that I would grip the cartridge with and then thread it into the adapter I have here. So you may notice this empty space to the right of the cursor, and that's because I originally was going to have a buffer tank here. Now the buffer tank would have allowed me to accumulate gas and then quickly dump it into the ram as fast as possible, or at least faster than just drawing from the tiny hole that the main tank has. So I made a measurement error, and unfortunately I had to scrap the buffer tank because it would have poked out like half an inch out of the wall and we can't have that. So definitely took a big nerf there and I'm really hoping for the next version of the robot to have a buffer tank and I can have the powerful flipping beast that I originally wanted. Then we also have the ball valve which is kind of like the on and off and vent in one which is pretty cool. So if the ball valve is pointing upwards by default it's off. The air can't go anywhere. But if I rotate it counterclockwise to the left, it'll vent and that'll dump everything out of the CO2 cartridge. Um, if I turn it all the way to the right over this way, it will basically turn the pneumatic system on, allowing air to flow from um, the cartridge towards the solenoid. 
So if you saw the Canadian stream or the or you know fight videos from Denver, you would see every match I would shove a tool inside of this hole here, and that would let me turn the um, the valve to either turn the robot on or off or vent the air. So that's just about it for the pneumatics. If we look at drive, you will see there are these two motors here. These are the bot kits, uh, 22 millimeters, I think. The motors were held in place with these 3D printed mounts. Um, they're just uh, nylon, nothing uh, too unusual there, and then just bolted into the base plate like everything else. So I actually changed quite a bit on where the wheels were positioned, and that's why the belts aren't lining up and it looks all sloppy, so please forgive that. This was my first time doing belt drive in any robot, so it was a bit interesting to set that up and it actually didn't have any problems so I was really happy with how that came out. Now what's interesting about Kelpie's drive is that the rear shafts are dead shafts and the front shafts are live shafts and I didn't really think set screws would work but they actually worked just fine so I think the next version will just have live shafts for both sets. So I have the wheel with its set screw and the hub with its set screw. So the wheel and the hub aren't actually, or the pulley and the hub aren't um, connected at all physically. They're just rubbing against each other. But in the back, they're actually bolted together. And I'll show a picture of that. That was a lot of work and it was kind of a pain. So if I can get away with just using set screws on a D shaft, I will stick with that in the future. Um, so that's our drive, that's our pneumatics. The electronics are kind of just thrown about um, wherever there's room. I don't have them catted. I have the batteries here. It uses two 2S batteries in series to make them 4S, um, which gave a decent drive, but I would absolutely love to uh, get four motors in here and get that redundancy like Highlander has and uh, also take up the speed a little bit. So I'll, I'll figure out some way to do that. Then we also have the weapon itself here. So anything remotely metal looking is three millimeter titanium, except for the base plate, which is only one millimeter titanium. But this was all water jet cut. The scoop was mounted with um, some nut strip. And then the scoop itself was bent um, using a map torch and a vise and a hammer and a lot of patience. I'll throw up some pictures of that as well, because that was quite the process, but it is doable. Uh, then let's see, we have the frame itself here. So this is all 3 8 inch UHMW. This was also water jet cut. And that held up fantastic during most of the fights. There was one fight with the butcher where this whole entire corner kind of got taken out. Um, but that's because it's exposed. If you look at the top plates here, you can see they're just mirror images of each other. They are 1 32nd of an inch Garolite which is, uh, it's okay. It held up all right, but I think that's because it didn't really take any direct hits. And if it did kind of get scratched, it instantly disintegrated. I have some pictures here. Basically, any time a spinner touched it, it would just evaporate that chunk of the Garolite. So not sure if that'll stay for the next version or if I'll go to something more beefy and possibly metal, but we'll see what weight allows. So now let's look at some fights. I'm not going to go into every single fight like I usually do. I'm just going to look at two, and that's going to be Kelpie versus The Butcher and Kelpie versus Psychotic Break. I want to look into these two fights specifically because they do a great job of summarizing what the main weaknesses are of the robot and what I'd like to change in the future. So first, let's look at Kelpie versus The Butcher. So you can see The Butcher gets up to speed right away. I kind of wanted to do a box rush, but I'm just not fast enough to do so. That is something I would like to do in the future though, so if I could get the drive up to a faster speed, that would be wonderful. Now I'm just kind of hiding behind the Red Hazard because I'm too scared of his giant spinner. After dancing around the arena for a few seconds, he lands this massive hit on me that sends us both flying across the arena, and this completely bends up my arm. It will not go back into its spot, and I pretty much get no flips the entire match because of this. Then I start slamming my face into the wall, hoping that will make the arm go down, but to no avail, even the hit from the Red Hazard doesn't put it back into its spot. So pretty much the match goes with me trying to not get hit, maybe trying to get lucky and get a flip in, but nothing ends up happening until eventually I end up accidentally driving into the Red Hazard, which sends me right into the pit. So the damage Kelpie took in this fight was absolutely devastating. The arm was completely bent, the shaft was starting to come out, 
one of the UHMW supports was almost completely knocked off. It just goes to show, um, you know, when a horizontal spinner gets up on top of the arm and starts beating at it, um, that'll really start to damage the robot. Also, driving backwards into him was a mistake because he would catch the um, arm blockers and bend those pretty bad as well. Something similar happened when I fought against Billy. His uh, horizontal spinner went right up the arm and then it sliced right into the solenoid, completely disabling it. So things like that need to be protected in the future. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe if I take the side pieces and angle them so that they uh, protect the arm better, that might help a lot in this case. So the next fight I want to talk about will be Kelpie versus Psychotic Break, which is Robert Cowan's new beetle. Uh, the last time I fought Robert was back in 2017, so it's been almost two years, and that was the Highlander versus Sergeant Cuddles. So the Highlander was able to win that fight. Can I keep my streak going with Kelpie? Uh, well, probably not, because I'm talking about robot weaknesses, but let's see what happens. My phone didn't catch this beginning part, but I drove over the seam backwards because this seam in the arena floor is absolutely ruining me and preventing me from crossing to the other side. I am able to take his hits pretty well, and I'm very happy with how well the, uh, the wedge is holding up. After tanking a few more hits, I try to go in for a flip, but I'm off by just a little bit, and the misfire causes me to land on my back. But luckily, I'm able to self-right and do like three backflips in the air and then get back on my feet. So then we fight a little bit more, I drive around, I try to outmaneuver him and get behind his robot. Then doing so, I fire the weapon, he goes up in the air and lands on the ground. Doing so causes his belt to be cut, and he is now weaponless, and I am free to toss him around and easily outdrive him as I shove him all over the arena. So how could I lose this? I can outdrive him, he has no weapon, he's no threat. Well, the floor seam strikes again. I drive forward a little bit too fast with my scoop that isn't even sharp and I get stuck right under the seam and do my best to back out, but I cannot move. My wheels are just spinning, but I'm not getting any traction. The wedges are probably rubbing against the ground, preventing me from moving as well. And I slowly get counted out. Even as Zach kicks the floor, there's just nothing I can do. And eventually Kelpie is counted out. So losing this way after you're almost guaranteed to win is definitely disappointing, but I don't blame Robert at all for leaving me there because if he did let me go free, that pretty much guaranteed that he would lose. Um, I probably would have done the same thing if I were in his shoes, especially in a single elimination bracket like this. And on the bright side, it does point out that my robot has traction and ground clearance issues. But on the even brighter side, which you can almost take literally with this shiny piece of memorabilia, Robert was kind enough to sign and gift me this piece of frame that I helped damage. And Robert's machine work always comes out so nice and pretty looking, so having a chunk of his robot sitting proudly in my trophy shelf makes for a great display piece. So that just about wraps it up. This is Kelpie, my three pound flipper. Thank you for watching, and please feel free to subscribe. Also check out my Facebook page if you want more updates on my content. See ya!